Hi guys, Kazzy Klein here and welcome to my channel. I decided to start uploading informative little podcast type things on YouTube to hopefully educate others and raise awareness of certain equestrian issues. I intend to upload one of these at least every month, hopefully more regularly, and focus on a different issue each time. Let me just take this opportunity to apologise for the sound quality, I'm only just getting to grips with the various apps and software I'll be using. I hope that future uploads will be of a better quality. Before I proceed, please can you just take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, the topic of today's podcast is one that is very close to my heart. Those of you who have seen my other videos will know that I have a little pony called Aria who has a condition called dwarfism, which is what I'd like to talk to you about today. So, what exactly is dwarfism? Well, it's a genetic condition which is estimated to be in over 50% of all miniature horse bloodlines. It primarily affects miniature horses and Shetland ponies, but it has also been known to occur in Frisians and donkeys. Theoretically, it can affect any type of equine, but experts believe that it is more prevalent in the breeds I just mentioned due to a combination of inbreeding, indiscriminate breeding, and possibly the fact that smaller breeds are already tiny, perhaps allowing the condition to strike more easily. There are four known types of dwarfism, which are diastrophia, which translates into twisted limb, but is not always the case. This type has been recorded in miniature horses and Frisians. Diastrophia is characterised by twisted extremities, cow hocks, ligament deformities, pot bellies, weak hind ends and roach backs. The main body of a diastrophic dwarf is often compacted due to regular sized organs and genitals which results in a pot bellied appearance. Their legs are often longer than expected in dwarfs and arthritis usually strikes at an early age. The second type is known as a chondroplasia which trans translates into short extremities. This is the most common form of dwarfism, and achondroplasia dwarfs have normal sized bodies and heads, but noticeably smaller upper legs and ears. The backs of achondroplasia dwarfs are often longer than normal ponies. Their legs are sometimes contracted and they usually have loose tendons. They can live fairly normal lives, but are often afflicted with premature arthritis. The third type is brachiocephalia, which is the most documented form of dwarfism in popular culture today, including famous ponies such as Thumbelina, who at 10 years old stood at only 17 and a half inches tall. Brachiocephaly... Sorry. <laughs> Brachiocephalia can be quite varied, so individual cases may not express the same traits or severity as another. It can cause mis cause misaligned jaws, obstructed nasal passages, protruding roach backs, and ligament disorders. They often have shorter lifespans due to heart and organ failure. The fourth type is hypochondrogenesis, which is the most fatal form of dwarfism. This type of dwarf are aborted before birth, often before reaching the embryonic stage. The foals usually have an exaggerated pot belly and cranium with short legs and their bones are not ossified. Hypochondrogenesis is thought to be caused by more than one form of dwarfism affecting the foal. The birth of a dwarf foal is usually an accident and therefore unexpected. However, there have been many cases in which dwarves have been purposely bred either for short stature or to sell as novelty pets. Most small horse and pony breeds have relied upon a certain level of inbreeding in order to survive, as well as Frisians who almost became extinct not so long ago. There are also, sadly, a lot of irresponsible people out there who simply don't care about producing dwarfs or spreading the gene even further. So, how does dwarfism occur? Well, both the mare and stallion have to possess the gene in order to produce a physical dwarf. However, by breeding one carrier to a non-carrier, or by breeding two carriers who each carry a different variation of the gene, you can produce yet more carriers. A carrier is deceptive as they can look physically perfect but still run the risk of producing dwarf foals in the future. The condition cannot be completely eradicated as many carriers go on to be top class show ponies. So, what can we do to reduce the risk of producing a dwarf foal? Well, it is the duty of breeders to act responsibly by doing the following. Number one, research both the mare and stallion to see whether or not dwarfism runs in their pedigrees or if they've already produced dwarf foals. Two, if either of the parents are carriers, it is advisable to discontinue breeding from them. 
Many people will tell you that it's fine to breed a non-carrier to a carrier or two carriers with different variants of the gene, but personally, I wouldn't risk it. There's such a big chance that future owners of the parents or foals will not act responsibly, so why risk it? Number three, be honest. If you do own carriers or a physical dwarf, don't let shame force you to keep quiet. By speaking out, you'll be raising awareness and allowing statistics and research to become more accurate. I adore my little Aria, who has a happy and currently pain-free life, but I am all too aware of how easily she could have fallen into the wrong hands. Many dwarves need loving forever homes, and caring for them is so rewarding, but be warned, their treatment can be expensive and they may need special daily needs. Therefore, they should not be taken on lightly. I hope that you've found this upload informative. Thank you for sticking with me if you made it this far. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so and feel free to leave feedback in the comments. Constructive criticism is always welcome. My sources are in the description below. Thanks for listening.